to make a choice. Um, um, I'm talking about the DBA profession system. Um, I think the choice for a usable archive codec is essential. So it makes sense that we talk about FEV1 here. But for, but for an archive dealing with huge number of recordings, this is just one piece of the cake. You need to manage the workflow of defined steps and document the proceedings. I believe that this is the only way to assure a controlled state of quality. Um, in the year 2010, I guess, when Peter Westinger and I decided that if we want to be a suitable codec for archiving at the Austrian Mediathek, we realized that there was no workflow management system for video digitizing available that could deal with this codec. And that was the reason why we started to develop EVA profession. It manages all steps from initializing the job, describing the carrier and its status, capturing into FFV1, analyzing the generated files, gener generating checksums, creating a viewing copy, collect collecting all technical metadata and writing it in a uh, max conform XML, checking the results and writing all data into the storage. Most of these tasks are processed automatically. Therefore, manpower can be focused on the remaining manual tasks. The most time consuming tasks are playing back the carriers correctly and checking the result. The concept behind TDA is to keep it as simple as possible and complex as necessary. There is no database behind it. There is just a chain of folders and a growing text file which is getting passed from one task folder to the next. The position of the text file defines the state of the process. So if you, if you close it down and, and come up again, you see what you got, not what you think you should have. Each capture station is an ordinary PC. <coughs> As the files are stored on the respective capture station, every additional PC comes with its own needed additional resources. There's no central file server which has to be extended. That makes it quite simple. With DVA profession at the Austrian Media Take, digitizing of media started in autumn 2011. Yes, that's correct. I claim that we were the first, the first using FFV1 in a system. So that's my declaration here. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a workflow management system coming from NOAA that can produce archive files with FFV1. And I hope you will hear more about this, uh, of this in this lightning talk. The University of Indiana forced a quiet provider, Nemnon, to produce files with FFV1 as codec. From now on, this provider can offer producing FFV1 even for smaller projects because the workflow is already installed. This, I, I say this because uh, I think this is a proceeding, this is a, um, um, a success. When we started using FFV1 as an archive codec at the Mediathek, we felt being kind of revolu revolu revolutionary, being almost alone in this area. Meanwhile, there are even commercial vendors or providers who deal with it. It's not a problem now anymore. I work for the Schweizer Transarchiv yeah. and um, we are exactly the same for that kind of workflow too and I looked into the DBA profession but I couldn't find um, Mac OS compatible version. What? Is that correct? Because we work on Mac Ah. And we cannot um, <laughs> afford to exchange our computers and our So I was wondering if you have the possibility to have that sort of thing. Um, maybe Peter can give a better answer. Uh, 
Yes and no. Basically, uh, the whole system doesn't care where the video files come from. So the whole processing and the whole workflow engine is a Linux computer in the background. You control it over the browser. So you can do this from Mac OS. And you just would have to replace the capture agent side. And this is where uh, the solution that Dave's actually been, been using, where they capture in transcode left to one, mm -hmm. uh, would be the connection link. So yes, this would be doable. It's a few modifications would be necessary, but they're rather minor. But if you're really interested, we can 